Good morning, Bucknutters. It is Tuesday, April 9th, 2024. I am Dan Rubin. This is the Bucknuts Morning 5 and Changed. We survived the apocalypse or the eclipse or whatever it was. We were in the 100% covered area here in Dayton and uh, it's definitely dark for a few minutes. Uh, got a great show planned for you today. Andrew Ivins, the director of scouting for 24-7 Sports, has joined us. He is the best when it comes to talking recruits from all over the country, and he has an acute understanding of what's going on at Ohio State. And then we will be joined by the dynamic duo of Bill Curlick and Mark Porter, the Dean and the Grand Pooh Bob. But first, nuts.com, don't you know? Not the other one. So uh, everyone can not send me emails or texts complaining. This is about nuts.com, one of the finest uh, companies that we have had a chance to work with and we are excited about. Um, they send tremendous fresh, fresh food, nuts, candies, everything that my kids like. Nuts.com is your one-stop shop for freshly roasted nuts, dried fruit, sweets, pantry staples like specialty flowers and more. Their wide selection means there is something for everyone. At nuts.com, quality is a top priority. They roast their nuts and pop their corn the same day it ships. So they reach you deliciously fresh. Satisfaction is guaranteed. This is good stuff. I'm telling you, you get it, you rip it, air, smoothness, freshness, bless your smoothness. Uh, right now, nuts.com is offering new customers a free gift with purchase and free shipping on orders of $29 or more at nuts.com backslash bucknuts. So go check out all of the delicious options at nuts.com backslash bucknuts. You'll receive a free gift and free shipping when you spend $29 or more. That's nuts.com backslash bucknuts. And we bring in the wonderfully talented Andrew Ivins from his Florida locale. We have finally caught up to him in weather, at least close, after a frigid, frigid winter. But we are excited. And I want to just piggyback on the conversation we were already having. Already having. It was not the one I planned. And... We are getting so much chatter from people at practice about Jeremiah Smith that I'm telling you, at some point in time, I'm going to get a text from someone saying he's better than Marvin Harrison. I know it's coming. That's where we're headed. Uh, I'm just trying to put the, I'm not even sure it's hyperbole in context because there's been no one who has said anything less than shock. Um, or confirmation now. There aren't many wide receivers who rank number one in 24-7 sports rankings. And when you rank someone number one and you're the guy responsible for it, you lose sleep, <laughs> even if he's great. So Andrew Ivins is now sleeping a lot better because Jeremiah Smith, though he knew he would, has come through and uh, putting a receiver number one, given our uh, – pedigree and how we do it was a was a surprise but not a surprise now I, I can't even tell you the stuff I told you I don't want to say it out loud because I'm afraid I'll get struck by lightning but the hyperbole and you're even now getting video there was a one hand catch in the end zone there was a deep play over Caleb Downs I don't know if I'm supposed to say that out loud but uh just kind of bring us up to speed on where what you're feeling right now we don't have to go through a complete memory lane <laughs> role but this guy has been I mean when you look back on your career Jeremiah Smith is going to be one of the foundational players you covered yeah and when we made him number one I think it was midway through the senior seasons and we were kind of going behind this you know back and forth behind the scenes and at, at one point my good friend in our scouting department, Cooper Patagna is like, you believe in this guy. That Like, this is the guy you've championed throughout the whole process. Let's just make him number one. And we felt the best about him. And then I think you kind of get evaluator fatigue. You start questioning yourself a little bit. It's like, okay, <laughs> like, are, are we sure here? I, at the All-American Bowl, I remember having breakfast and, and admitting that to someone. I'm like, I, I don't know. And I think it was after that first scrimmage. So it was a few days after he got that black stripe off his helmet. And there was the clips make it come, making the rounds of him making that jump ball. I 
I was driving with my wife and I'm like, okay, I, I finally feel good. Like we got <laughs> this one right. And she's like, okay, ab about time. But no, I mean, he's a, he's a complete prospect. And I think what's different about Jeremiah Smith and what made us feel so convicted about making him number one is how he is wired between the, the ears. Like he is a pro's pro. And obviously he's Geno Smith's cousin, but I kind of said it and I thought it throughout the whole recruiting process. Like this isn't your typical South Florida kid. He is not drawn to the big shiny things. Like his family's going about it a different way. And I'm not really surprised that he has found his bearings or footing so quickly and i'm excited to see him this season like i think in general like this 2025 receiver class they're going to make some noise in college football and jeremiah smith's going to be at the forefront but you got cam coleman at auburn bryant wesco at, at clemson uh ryan wingo at texas like i think this is a generational crop and we're seeing a little bit of it in spring practices and jeremiah smith is is by far you know the guy and that's why we made him number one as good as he is uh, at everything, his body, he's just blessed. There's just not many people put on earth that look like that ever, much less 18 years old. It's hard to kind of get your mind around it. Um, I mean, he looks like Julio Jones as an adult. Which yeah. Is hard. It's, it's, it's staggering. It literally, I mean, it's, it's, it's general. I mean, and, and what's have to get like a thesaurus out. What's, to, what's, uh, what's fun is, I think I tweeted this out a while back. You know, I, I keep a bunch of sheets and old rosters and stuff on my desk. I don't know why, but this time it paid off because I went back to when we ranked Jeremiah Smith in our initial 100 in our old notes. I think he was like 180 pounds. And at the All-American Bowl, he was 214. So this kid has put on 40 pounds over the past three years. And he's a gold medalist in the 110 hurdles, 300 meter hurdles. Like this guy can move. So a, a, a special, special athlete. And, you know, his family's got, I kind of stumbled upon this a while back. Like he's got some relatives that were big time boxers. He's got another relative that was a, a big time sprinter. So it's a very athletic family. And, you know, I'm, I'm just excited to see him Saturday in the spring game. And yeah. then, you know, in, in the fall months. Well, spring games. Uh, I try to temper everybody's expectations for a lot of things. One thing you can see in the spring game is a receiver and a quarterback hook up and get busy. Um, so that should be fun. I think people are also going to really enjoy getting to know the guy too. He's like you said, most of our fans haven't gotten a chance to hear him talk as much. Um, and like you said, he's a sharp cat and uh, wise beyond his years. There are a couple, when some guys talk, you're like, I've said this before. You start to be like, Oh my God. When I was 18, I couldn't put together two sentences without giggling, you know, and this guy is just, he's been through it. The idea that he's going to come to Ohio State and be under a lot of pressure, I get that Ohio State is a lot of pressure. But guys like this have been in the spotlight for since he was 15 years old every day. I, uh, the spotlight does not bother this guy. You know what I'm saying? They're just used to it. We're raising a generation of kids that are pros by age 15 just because they're talking to the media, their name has been out there, they've been to camps, they've been evaluated, they've been through it, man. So this guy is battle-tested already, and the transition period did not exist, which is fantastic. All right, class of 2025, I have a theory. Ohio State was always an attractive spot, but I also looked for the past, I would say, four or five years. When a guy had an offer – offers from Georgia, Alabama, and Ohio State. To me, he was in a different class. Uh, the guys that only considered those three schools, a little bit of a different types. You can recruit Seattle. You can recruit Maine. You can recruit Texas. These guys are not worried about leaving home. These guys are focused on the pros. A lot of time, dad was a pro, okay? Alabama's not the same now without Nick. They may be as good in football, it's not realistic to think they can recruit currently at the same level without tricky Nick in charge, given just the Caleb Downs recruitment last year, as an example. So I think now Georgia and Ohio state are sitting in the catbird seat for a while. And that there's a percentage of guys who are really only going to consider Georgia and Ohio state. Now there's some other schools they'll consider, but one of the reasons I think Ohio state is kicking such tail on the, trail so far is Alabama's not there 
And so it's kind of like Georgia and Ohio State. And then, look, if you get a kid from Louisiana, I get LSU. If you get a kid from Texas, I get Texas. And it, But it seems to me those two have pulled ahead. Now, it's usually a third school will come in eventually. We hear Texas. Some people think it'll be Oregon. could be Alabama again. But the current recruiting cycle and the current situation, I think Ohio State is benefiting greatly. Um, am I off base? No, I think you're right. I think if there's one school that has benefited the most from Nick Saban's retirement, it's Ohio State. Now, you can look at the commit list. I mean, Naeem offered top-ranked prospect in Alabama. That's usually you know a breakaway dunk for the Crimson Tide if they want that kid. Now, they didn't right. necessarily want every single guy. I mean, when you're – of that caliber, it's you're at, at sometimes just drafting, you know, selecting who you want. And that's kind of what, what George is doing. And, and the thing is, is George can only take 28 guys, right? Yeah. They, they can only take so many. Um, so I, I think you're spot on there. Um, you know, there's some other programs. I mean, the landscape has changed so much. And this isn't even with the NIL, but now we're going to get to this, this 12 team playoff. You know, there's a lot of new faces in new places. We'll see what Kalen DeBoer does there in Tuscaloosa. I think it's found he's he's learning, um, <laughs> learning on the job when it comes to recruiting. Uh, you know, go, coming from Washington, you know, Division two background, has never recruited the South. It's taken him a little bit to get calibrated, and we're seeing some results on the recruiting trail. Um, but yeah, I, I think you're you're spot on. Now there's some other other schools that could certainly break through. You know, with this expanded playoff a lot of teams have gone in on the transfer portal like you know Ole Miss comes to mind I think Hugh Freeze and Auburn are doing an excellent job there do they become the the kings of of the yellow hammer state and you know are they the ones going uh, neck and neck with with the crimson tide so I I think you're right and then you look down in in Florida it was a difficult year for for Billy Napier I mean when they have it cranking that they can get their guys at Clemson you know they're Davos kind of about his way. So it is, I, I think you, I think you're onto something for sure. I want to talk about the class of 2025. It looks like, and at this point, it's kind of hard to determine, but Ohio State's going to have a chance to be number one. Um, that's a lot of chatter right now. And I used to not worry about this because I just figured Alabama would snake him at the end regardless. So, but I guess I don't have to worry about that. And I'm going to assume it's going to be Georgia, but your thoughts on the class of 2025 right now, the guys who kind of jump out at you, you don't have to go through the whole list, but um, the guys that kind of jump out at you. And then I would like you to touch on the two New Jersey guys that, that hopped on because we didn't know as much about them and you had some tremendous insight on them. Well, I think this group, I mean, it's got to start with the corners. Um you know, two five stars. We only got 16 five stars right now. Eventually, we're going to get to 32 in May. But these guys are are the real deal. I mean, you got Naeem Offer, Devin Sanchez, and I think it's going to be a battle through the All-Star games as to who has the CB1 title. Uh, kind of pick your flavor. To me, Devin Sanchez, you know, a little bit longer, more finesse. I, I view him as more of an off-man corner. And then Naeem Offer, he's got the size you want as well, but he's more of a physical press man individual. Uh, I think you can play him in a boundary role. I mean, the fact that those two are going to team up together. I mean, that's, <laughs> we, we always get asked, I, I continue to get asked, this, you know, what is this duo like? And I can't find an example. Now I, I think Ohio state a couple of years ago signed two five-star corners. I, I don't think they necessarily panned out, but the, the example I keep bringing up is like, this is the potential to be, what Alabama had, and you're going to see it in the NFL draft, right? You have Terry and Arnold uh, and Kool-Aid McKinstry. They, they're they both projected to be first rounders. Kool-Aid's kind of, you know, might go in day two, but I think it's similar in a sense like that and kind of comparison wise too, in, in terms of the body type. So what could it be? I think it's two potential first round corners if you avoid setbacks. And then, you know, it's not just them in the DB hall. I like Blake Woodby a lot. Got a chance to see him play in person two times this past year for St. Francis Academy. I think he's my favorite kind of slot inside corner, which is becoming increasingly more important in football. Look to look to the NFL, right? You need guys that can man up in the slot and, and cover for five seconds. And I think Blake would be 
got some of the top 40 yard dash times in this class. I mean, he, he likes to run his mouth kind of a little, you know, he's, he's a little spark plug and, you know, so now you got him on the inside and then you brought up Deshaun Stewart, you know, you pop on the tape with him and it's like, okay, you know, not the highest ranked of that, of that, of those four, but you can see it safety. I think, Absolutely. But I also think he could play on the inside. He's got a near 80 inch wingspan. You know, I love how he gets to the catch point, fights through hands and breaks up passes. And then he's a really solid open field tackler in the alley. So I think 100% the strength of the class is, is that DB group interested to see what they do at safety. I know, like we said, Deshaun Stewart's in there, but they're in it for Fahim Delaney. Uh, kind of a box safety, really physical, you know, sledgehammer of a hitter. So I want to see how they round that out. But this has a chance to be a DB haul um, of, you know, one of the all-time defensive back hauls. And would they have done that if Nick Saban is is running running the show in Alabama? I I don't know. I mean, Alabama just signed three five-star DBs before he um, retired. And then I think the other name you got to bring up is Tavian St. Clair. Uh, sure number two quarterback for us right now. You know, I don't know where the rest of the industry has him. I I would assume, you know, the the composite, everything's going to reflect that here at some point in the future. It's funny when we went to do our most recent update, which was last month on the uh, 2025s, I like to watch the last game of a kid's season. Normally it's the best competition they're going to see. They're in some type of state playoff setting. I think you can learn a lot. I accidentally watched the last game of Tavian's sophomore season. And I'm like, oh, I don't know. Figured out halfway through, I'm like, this is his sophomore season. Pop on the last game of his junior season. Completely different quarterback. So much more field command. He's got a big frame, you know, 6'3", 225 pounds. I haven't been around him. You know, he was out at the Nike Next Ones event. For uh, which coincided with the Super Bowl, our guy Tom Lloyd was out there. He's like, dude, physically, this guy looks like a linebacker, and I think he's just improved so much as a passer. You know, obviously, we think highly of him, five star prospect. You got the Elite 11 regional in Ohio coming up in I think two weeks. I'm gonna be out there, would not be surprised if he punches his ticket to uh, the Elite 11 finals, but I think he's gonna be a riser for everyone. And then you think big picture, okay, Ohio State, that quarterback room. You know, they just brought in Julian Sayan and Aaron Nolan. Well, guess what? They got another guy coming. Um, so I think it's one of the top or has one of that quarterback room has one of the highest ceilings. If we look, OK, two, three years down the line, just based on things where things stand right now. St. Clair passes the eye test physically better than anybody in Ohio State's quarterback room right now. Now, I'm not saying he's to be better than anybody in there, but if you just look at height, weight kind of the way he looks the kind of that charisma look in his eye he's going to be on a football card quarterback guy he's got the total i mean he's not fully grown i don't think but he's i don't know how big he's going to be he's almost we're excited i was just say that all right <laughs> this weekend we've got some really cool guys coming in uh spring games i always got a great visitor list i was hoping you could talk about uh several dudes but before we get to that just quickly Recent commitments of Tarvis Alford out of Vero Beach and London Merritt, who's, I think, at IMG now. Um, Your thoughts on those guys real quickly. I was really impressed with Tarvis Alford. We haven't had a linebacker here like that since Jerome Baker and that kind of just a great athlete, great tackler. Um, I didn't see him in coverage too much. I don't know if he can do that, but um, kind of fits that mold. And we said Jerome wasn't always the most beloved guy here, but he just, you know, he's going on year seven in the NFL because he's got those traits. Uh, TJ is, um, you know, we first scouted him. He was playing safety and you always want to move those guys forward towards the line of scrimmage. He's just, he's rocked up and I, you know, he's better against the run than he is against the pass, but I, he's still a good enough athlete, you know, to drop back, and, and handle some zone coverage responsibilities. Now, is he going to be able to match up with Iowa's tight ends and, and run man on man? I'm not sure. You know, we'll see what he looks like here as a, uh, as a senior at, at Vero beach, but you know, freelancing kind of play style, he kind of floats around at the second level knifes in and, and makes a stop. I mean, over a hundred tackles this past season, 
you know, it, he's a throwback kind of thumper linebacker. And you think about the Big Ten, it's like, okay, you know, this is a take that Ohio State, you know, needed it down in the in the Sunshine State. You know, one of our favorite linebackers here at this stage in the cycle. And he's a guy that, you know, Florida's big three, Miami, Florida, Florida State, they all wanted him. So, you know, I, I love that pickup. And then and then Landon Merritt, you, you're right. He was at Woodward Academy in Atlanta. Now he's going to spend his senior season at IMG Academy. I was at their pro day. I think it was a couple months ago. I mean, they're raving about this kid. And you watch him in that setting. I mean, he has some short area quickness, excellent three-cone time, excellent short shuttle time, bit of a tweener. You know, he's like six two and a half, two hundred and fifty 250 pounds. You know, I think he's a guy that you could play on the inside, on the outside. You know, wh where do you want to kind of, you know, they need a vision for him, and I'm I'm assuming Ohio State does, but yeah. th they've been looking for pass rushers. And a then, tweener, yeah, he's a tweener, but tweeners are in right now. Like I know it. There's a lot of tweeners making a lot of money uh, on Sundays, and oh, yeah. dig back into the junior tape. You know, maybe the sack production wasn't there, but he gets to the quarterback. He uh, he can bend around the edge, and and like I said. You know, IMG, those coaches there are, are fired up about him, and they churn out a, a blue-chip pass rusher every year. So I wouldn't be surprised if he has a big senior season. But again, you know, just looking at Ohio State, looking, they, they keep searching for that next kind of dude on the edge. And I think London Merritt has a chance to be kind of that individual. All right, I want to finish with this. Like I said, spring game this weekend, got some very cool visitors we're going to have. A couple other guys, Mark and Bill, on here in a minute to chat about that. But three guys that jumped out to you when I sent you the list. Defensive lineman, Jakeem Stewart. Defensive lineman, Bryce Perry Wright. And edge, Xavier Griffin. I think everyone will be happy to hear about some linemen. We've gotten to the point where when we sign a receiver, if he's not, you know, generational, people are like, meh, we can do – Linemen, offensive linemen, I won't even get to, but defensive linemen, we'd love to hear about it. So Jakeem Stewart, Bryce Perry Wright, and Xavier Griffin, and then we'll get you out of here. Yeah, Jakeem Stewart and, and Bryce Perry Wright, you know, two of the top interior guys that we've come across in that 2026 cycle. We're going to update our rankings here in two weeks. So we're kind of pouring through the tape. Bryce Perry Wright, um, I guess, yeah, your listeners will like this. He's actually at his third school in like nine months. So he was at oh, he, so he was at St. Francis Academy. Uh -oh. They went down. They went down to Buford. There was like a post game fight. So he, I think his mom, from what I heard, pulled him out of school. Then he was at Rat Raybun Gap Narcusi, which is on the Georgia North Carolina border. Played basically his whole sophomore season there, and against Providence Day, which is where. Michigan quarterback Jaden Davis was playing his football. You have David Sanders there, Leo Delaney, some top offensive linemen. This kid was unblockable. I mean, he was in Jaden Davis's face all game. I think he had three sacks, and they played him again, and it was kind of the same story. So he's a pocket pusher in the middle. He's now at Las Vegas Bishop Gorman. Uh, time, out. Just... time out. Time out. Are you saying <laughs> that he went from St. Francis in Baltimore Yes. To a school in Georgia, and now he attends school in Las Vegas. Yeah, it's been a – Okay, I just wanted to make sure. I, yeah. I, that's, I've never heard that before, but like I said, this era, Tarvis Alford taking all five official visits after his commitment. Nothing is – go ahead. I'm sorry to interrupt. Well, no, actually, actually, I got him confused. That is uh, James Carrington. This is Bryce Perry okay. Wright. He's at okay, Buford. Good. They are kind of you the same saved that family a lot of flight time. I know, I know, I know. I, they're like the same player. Uh, I can't believe I just mixed them up, but that's all right. That, that's a pass. Bryce Perry Wright, Edward Houston's teammate, also in that Buford St. Francis game. We we invited him to the Amer All American Bowl that night. Uh, another pocket pusher in the middle. I mean, you think about Buford, high floor type of players, guy that oh, yeah. um, can get the job done. One of our, one of our, our, our other favorite interiors, and then Jakeem Stewart out of Louisiana. You know, freak in the combine setting. Um, I mean, he he looks like Hulk, and he's tested exceptionally well. Kid we saw at the FBU freshman a game, I don't know, two years ago. I mean, he absolutely dominated just at Miami this past weekend. I think LSU's the one you always got to watch. They don't let a lot of those guys get out of the boot. Um, but he is big-time upside. Still want to see some more on the field. 
Um, you know, but the fact that they're getting those two, I mean, two top five interior defense alignment and then Xavier Griffin, lanky pass rusher on the outside. Um, you know, you can get to the quarterback. I know Georgia's in heavily on him. So that's, that's an excellent trio. Like when you sent me that list that jumped out and then I got to get this take in Chris Henry Jr. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He is my favorite 26 I've watched so far. The fact that Ohio State is going to potentially go Jeremiah Smith, Chris Henry Jr. I mean, it's unfair that it is like essentially a cheat code. I know there is a little fatigue with the elite wide receivers yeah. going to Ohio State. But with this kid put on tape um, this past season, I mean, you know, long frame, explosive cuts, ball skills, it's all there. Uh, I, I think there's a chance he, he could be number one in 2026 for us when we update here soon. Now that is a way to end it. Andrew Ivins, ladies and gentlemen, he is the best at what he does, and he will be on here routinely. We are thrilled to have him. Go enjoy some sunshine, sir. Sorry for getting those two D linemen mixed up. I can't believe I did that's that. That's all right. I, I'll throw a flag on myself. That's okay. That was a great story. I, the fact that we are at a place where people can go from b more to Georgia to Vegas, and I'm it's like, uh, things have changed. We appreciate it, man. Have a great day. Of course. Of course. Thanks for having me on. Peace. All right. I want to get over our next sponsor before I bring in the Grand Poobah and the Dean, and that is Gooder Glasses. Let me tell you something. Very psyched when they became part of our sponsorship here. I cannot tell you how many times, and I think everybody has done this. You get yourself a nice pair of shades. They run you, what, a couple hundred bones. You go to an Ohio State game. There's maybe an afternoon kickoff. You got your shades on. The sun goes down. You continue to tailgate. You wake up. Where are your shades? You just lost 200 bucks. Well, Gooder has fixed that. Stylish sunglasses starting at only $25 a pair. No slip, no bounce, all polarized, all fun. They've got about 50,000 five-star reviews. You get a one-year warranty, 30-day free returns. Very cool names. Like, right, they come in these cool boxes right here. Look at this, man. This is not going to 7-Eleven and getting, you know, a cheap pair you're willing to lose that day. Even though if you do lose them, it's 25 bucks. Look at this, man. Look how trendy these are. Anyway, um, these are called, they got great names. These are called Call Me Tarmac Daddy, meaning I'm on a private jet going somewhere. Not at all. Uh, Mr. Bucknuts no longer allows me. But if you want to support this show and try a pair, Gooder is giving Bucknuts Morning 5 listeners free shipping. You can go to gooder.com backslash Bucknuts and use code Bucknuts for free shipping. Gooder offers a 30-day money-back guarantee and 100% satisfaction. Again. That's gooder.com backslash bucknuts and use code bucknuts for free shipping. I'm serious. This is a great product. You could buy three. Siri's so sensitive on this. You could buy three pairs of that, half price. If you lose one, so be it. You move on with your life. Look who it is, people. They're finally in. The Dean, Bill Curlick, and the Grand Poobah, Mark Porter. Mark Porter looks like he's back at home. Otherwise, he's bringing framed things on the road to make himself feel better, which would be a window in his personality and quite trouble. Um, we just had Andrew Ivins on, and it was great. Andrew, of course, you know, maybe the premier voice on Jeremiah Smith and ranked him number one overall in the class and got some guff for ranking a receiver that way. And no one is happier to see what's coming out of practice than Andrew Ivins and confirming his uh, – number one spot. Now, I want to piggyback on something we discussed last week, because I actually did some research. We talked about Marquise Davis, and when you mentioned that he was six foot one and 210 pounds, I was alarmed, because most people that size don't run that like that, okay? So I decided I was going to find out how many guys have gone to the NFL Combine and been about six foot one and been about 210 pounds and run what we believe to be about a four, four, three or a sub four, four. That's the expectation. Let me tell you something. Uh, it was even more rare than I expected. So what I did was just because people lie about their height a little bit, I did six foot and three quarters of an inch, 
to six foot one and a quarter of an inch. So we expanded it by a quarter of an inch on each side. And then they were between 210 and 220 pounds and run a sub four, four. Let me tell you how many people were on there. One. Darren McFadden. Okay. So this is what we're talking about here. Darren McFadden. I had to go back to 2008 for the combine. There's a, there's a site you can go and put, it goes all the way back. He was six foot one and a quarter, 211 pounds, ran a four, three, eight. Here are the other two that don't exactly fit that, but were close enough. Deuce McAllister. Okay. Six foot one, 6.11, 222, ran a four, four, one. And the only other one, Joe Mixon, six foot and three quarters of an inch, 226 pounds, four, four, five. You are talking about a rare combination of speed and size. All four of those guys, excuse me, those three, I don't even know. You combine career earnings of Darren McFadden, Deuce McAllister, and Joe Mixon. Those are three big-time running backs in the NFL. And I'm telling you, there aren't many. There were a couple other guys who came close to the physical characteristics that I'd never heard of, but um, very impressive. Now, if you look on the site, you will see Marquise Davis's Buckeye in the Sky evaluation is up there. Mark Porter has done another fantastic job. So we're not going to go too deep into that, Mark, but if you can just tell the people what they will see if they look up there, that would be tremendous. And those of you playing at home, you know there's some video. Yeah, if, if, if you don't know about Marquise, his number one trait is speed. And if you haven't been to a track meet lately, this film is basically a substitute for a track meet. Uh, all he's doing is busted off 40, 60, 80 yard runs and outrunning everybody in the end zone. Uh, some good photo work by Mrs. Porter. This is the bill that ga- uh, the game that Bill and my wife were at. And just before this run, the student section was chanting overrated. And you see a guy with a five yard angle over the top, and he's going to lose the race by five yards. Uh, just speed after speed after speed. Marquise Davis is a type of back that linemen love to block for because if you just give him a crack, he has the average yards per rush that are going to make you look fabulous as an offensive lineman. But that's what all offensive coordinators, that's making football easy. It's like a cheat code. Just give him a seam. Uh, he has the vision as you see him slip out of that to, to make cuts and slide out of uh, would-be dead-end areas. He, he can get out of those jams. He runs with power. This 6'1", 210-pound frame now, uh, I can't wait to see it next year to see if we get more power runs between the tackles, uh, see if he thumps people when he puts the shoulders down. Uh, but you don't want him to turn into a thumper. You want him finding daylight. And look at him split the middle of those two corners. I mean, two of the fastest guys on the field, he runs by them like they're not even there. Uh, again, just to track me. I mean, shot out of a gun mentality. Uh, it, this is a fa- going to be a fan favorite to land at Ohio State because people fall in love with speed. Uh, people fall in love with a lot of things and speed is one of them. And this is just so impressive that I, we try to make these about two minutes. Uh, I couldn't find a play where he wasn't breaking away for a touchdown, not to include in under two minutes. It would have been four minutes of touchdowns before we got to just your garden variety, 10 and 15 yard runs, which are highlights for most players. So uh, if I didn't do the, the speed part of him justice, that's who he is. But, Dan, I, I love the breakdown you just did with the, the big backs in the NFL because, boy, that's – It can fly. It's, yeah, that, that's, it's, it's, it's like a new classification. But let's see how he uses the power because we've watched this kid grow, if, like I've said before, from 175 to 190 to now 210. So we may see three different players in consecutive years as he grows into his body and adjusts to the – the newfound gifts he's given himself. You know, if you're not used to running with power, it's kind of like, how do I do this thing? And how do I start slamming in there at 100 miles an hour if I'm if I'm used to bursting to daylight? You know, and I and I can remember Darren McFadden in the NFL and him trying to burst to daylight all the time. And you're like, hey, you're this big back. Why don't you go in there and pound a few people? Guys like that, that they want the big chunks of yardage and they like hitting daylight. So we'll see how this develops. I'm not sure any running back. So uh, Darren McFadden went to Arkansas, iron, not ironically, but interestingly, he was in a, like, I don't, they didn't run the wishbone. They often snapped, they did a wildcat, but they had Felix Jones and Peyton Hillis in the back field with them. Um, Peyton Hillis, I think his career, his career high in the NFL with your, with your dogs, Bill, 
his career single season was higher than uh, McFadden's. McFadden ran over the SEC and through the SEC maybe more effectively than any other running back I've ever seen. If you want to Google someone impressive against the heyday of the Alabamas and the Georgias, go Google. That's Arkansas's absolute heyday when they had Darren McFadden back there. I think he finished second or third in the Heisman voting. Top five pick, went to the Raiders. Never really materialized as a pro, um, although he had a great year in Dallas. But um, total stud, um, and that's what that's what we're talking about here. So that's on the site right now. You have to be a premium member to get all that. Go get Mark's evaluation. And, Bill, complete kinda, the circle for us here. Hold on a sec. What's the recruiting situation with Marquise Davis? We're hearing the, the big, bad guys in Ann Arbor are interested. Well, hopefully he will be on the Ohio State campus tomorrow. That's the hope. Um, in fact, I did an article uh, of what I am hearing. Um, I think it was Sunday, maybe, Sunday evening. Um, they are – Marquise has indicated he would like to get to an Ohio State spring practice. Well, there's one Wednesday and there's one Friday. Uh, they were targeting maybe for him to get down. Wednesday for the practice, but also Ohio State would like him to come in for the spring game. So uh, in a perfect world, he'll be at both. He'll be at practice Wednesday and the Ohio State spring game on Saturday. So that's the hope. We'll see what happens. Um, also, Brandon Cesar, his defensive end teammate who Ohio State has offered, he is planning to get back to Ohio State on Saturday for the spring game. So, again, the hope is, is that uh, – both those guys end up at the spring game Saturday and Marquise at the practice on Wednesday as well. Uh, there's a possibility that they could be down at Ohio State with their head coach, Max Stevens, who uh, does a great job uh, coaching Cleveland Heights as well as helping these kids with their recruitment. Um, but Max Stevens is coming off knee replacement surgery that he had a few weeks ago. So we'll, we'll see on that. But um if all goes well, it would be great if those guys were in town at Ohio State at least once or maybe twice this week. Can't please everybody, guys. That's for sure. The comment I was going to make about uh, speed is you mentioned Joe Mixon in there, and I know he just got a lucrative deal with the Texans, and he's been in the league, and they're talking about how running backs fall off the cliff at that 28, 29, and he's in that range. But speed and longevity stays in the league. And we talked last week about uh, Jerome Baker and Hicks. And those guys are in the league still because of speed. And I just want to make the point that Marquise Davis will be a pro running back because of the height, weight, speed. It'll just be a matter of how big time he is and what type of career he has simply because of the speed. You know, this, this trait is so coveted that people give uh, second chances to speed forever, even, you know, you have background issues. I mean, Joe Mixon uh, has some background issues and, you know, it, it's been totally forgotten of 10 years into his career because of his speed at a rare height and weight, not to digress too much into that, but. No, I, I think you're on point there. All right, Bill, let us know who's visiting for the spring game that we should really, really know about. Andrew Ivins told us about a few guys that you don't necessarily need to hit a couple interior linemen. Um, Chris Henry, who who should we know that's coming this weekend, and do you expect it to be a red carpet extravaganza? Well, um, you never know. You, know, you, you say the, these guys are going to visit, and, and they sometimes show up, quite often show up, and sometimes they don't make it. Uh, Jonas Williams, the safety from Galveston Ball High School, he's had a couple trips in mind for Ohio State this spring, but has not been able to make it. He was supposed to be in Columbus the big March 30 weekend, but was not able to make it, and he went to Texas A&M that weekend instead. But hopefully he is at the Ohio State game, spring game on Saturday. That's his plan, and he would certainly be a great one to get on campus. Uh, uh, and speaking of safeties, the country's number one or number two safety, depending on how you look at the rankings for 2026, Jaira Edwards is supposed to be at the spring game. I think he will make it. Um, Micah Smith, talk about offensive lineman. He's an outstanding one for 2026. He is supposed to be uh, there. And it, it, really, a lot of the 2026 theme for the spring game because the high state has hosted so many of their top 2025 guys already this spring. 
Um, we, we talked about, though, for 2025, Brandon Cesar and Marquise Davis. Hopefully they will be there. Uh, I think uh, I heard Andrew and you guys talking. Bryce Perry Wright, uh, great player. He is likely to be there. We'll see if that happens. Likely. Max Riley, uh, offensive lineman that I love, having crystal ball to Ohio State. Uh, again, 2026, he is supposed to be at the spring game. Elbert Hill, another one of my favorites from Ohio, a cornerback. Another one that I have crystal ball to Ohio State. Uh, he is planning to be at the spring game. Um, uh, Will Conroy, yet another Ohio offensive lineman for 2026 that the Buckeyes have offered. He is uh, supposed to be there. I believe I have crystal balled him to Ohio State as well. So, uh, Jaquim Stewart, obviously can't forget him. I think he may be rated right now the number one player in the country for 2026. He's going to be there. And then, of course, commitments. Chris Henry, speaking of number one, supposed to be there. And uh, Tavian St. Clair, Carter Lowe, uh, so on and so forth for the commitments. Blake uh, uh, would be, by the way, supposed to be there. So going to be a great group. Who jumps out to you, Mark? Who do we got in the queue here? Uh, Drayton Pavey was a guy that I saw the question. Uh, this is still uh, Marquis Davis. I didn't pull up anybody new. But I've seen this question a couple of times about Pavey. And uh, he is a big defensive tackle from Taft. Well, He's a little bit raw. Go ahead. I know people don't like me to interrupt. And I get a lot of comments on this. Drayden Pavey, who is he and where is he from? So we can set the stage here. Okay, Cincinnati Taft High School, and he's a big defensive tackle down there, class of 2026. Um, very explosive film. I, I'd say he has some flash plays or some splash plays on film that you get excited about and say, ooh, this kid keeps doing that. He's a big-time player. Um, that's where I had him on my report when I put him in there as a highly graded player. But, you know, uh, fill in the blanks maybe next year, and then you arrive as this five-star type player. Uh, I see his name coming up the last couple of weeks. So I think, you know, Ohio State's showing their interest. Uh, if he was early offered, I wouldn't be shocked. But I think he's more of a wait and see and see if he can get some consistency to the splash plays because, boy, does he look dominating at times. But it's just the body of work would maybe need to be a little more solid if you're getting picky by a scout. Uh, I see we're getting uh, questions down there about Nathan Bernhard and we – had him uh, on some – we did some exclusive video of him last week, the quarterback from Ashland, and we talked about him as a big, strong-arm guy. And I'm seeing the question we answered on the last uh, episode about Bo Jackson and, Cle and Cleveland Heights running back Marquise Davis. Uh, if we don't get both, which one do we ball like? And we all went with uh, the Cleveland Heights running back Davis, and Dan you know, went extra to start off the show about why he is so special with the speed. I think we all had speed as our determining factor. <clears throat> I see one more question about – Maxwell Riley and Sam Greer. I thought Maxwell Riley had the best film for the class of 2026, the most polished. And I thought Sam Greer maybe has the most upside. Uh, I think he needs some more development. And then Will Conroy was definitely the inside guy that, you know, if you're taking your center or guard, he's your most solid prospect inside for the class of 2026. So uh, as I'm looking at the questions coming in, I hope I touched on a few that, you know, just popped up. Good stuff. I had, to, I had to laugh at that comment. I know, William. Um, How about that tribe start, somebody? Yeah, here we go. Don't get him uh, started on the on the Guardians, which, which come on, what kind which, of? Which, by the way, I, I did not mention Madden for Amo, the outstanding linebacker from California. He is supposed to be in Columbus on Friday and into Saturday. Um, he he was at Ohio State's camp back in June, and uh, with both parents, had a great time and. He is one of the country's elite linebackers. And age-wise, you can assume he was named Madden because of the video game, which is awesome. <laughs> All right. Terry Slusher asks, Bill, I'd like you to handle this. If Bo Jackson, Marquise Davis, and Jordan Davison, running back from California, all three want to commit to Ohio State, who would we take? I wouldn't be surprised if they would take all three. Um, they just lost a running back yesterday. Dallin Hayden. So they're down a running back. They, and actually I said this, I don't know, probably two or three weeks ago, somebody asked me that. Uh, in fact, uh, I think uh, at some point I might have, and well, I, I know that I was asked that and said, I wouldn't be surprised if, if they could get all three, they take all three, especially because of uh, 
the versatility of Bo Jackson. That guy can play safety. He can play linebacker. In fact, uh, every time I go see him play in person, he's playing almost all the time on defense and just kind of sparingly on offense. So, yeah, I, I wouldn't be surprised if they could somehow manage to get all three, that they would take all three. They are that good. I know people love my digressions, so I'm going to take one right here. This is a Michigan fan coming to say we're going to lose four in a row come November. <clears throat> we had someone yesterday uh, comment on our, what we learned from after the Michigan game saying he came back because he loves the tears. Here's what I would say to the Michigan fans. You deserve to be running your mouth and do, do what you can. One thing I don't think you've considered, you're probably going to lose to Ohio State the next time you play them. I mean, we just look at the teams. If you thought the abuse you took from Ohio State fans during the urban rain was bad, what's going to happen after that game this time around is not going to be pretty. And I'm not one to go on to other sites, or, but I cannot – tell you the level of vitriol that you're going to release when that happens i can just say that it will be worth chronicling and i will enjoy it but it is coming and it is going to be legendary um i, I need to go, legendary, go ahead bill I, I need to go back real quick jeff overton i did not mention him for the spring game uh, he is going to be at the spring game. He's got an official visit set. And when we talk about those other guys, um, Jordan Davison, Bo Jackson, Marquise Davis, um, all great players. Jeff Overton has an official visit ske schedule. He's the first one that's got the official visit schedule, May 31st weekend to Ohio State. So he is going to be at the spring game April 13th. I did check again with, with uh, his family, and they are still planning to be – at the spring game, April 13th, as well as take that official visit, May 31st. And he uh, he is an outstanding running back, too. He doesn't get mentioned all the time, but he's real good. His dad was a great option quarterback, and now as a coach, you know you're getting old when the sons of players start getting in. I'm going to retire the first time I see a grandchild. That's my rule. Um, <laughs> Bill, don't tell anyone if you've seen that yet, because then you might have to retire. <laughs> All right. That was a good show. Um, we will be back on Thursday with a whole bunch of stuff. Um, we will get really into who's coming for the spring game. And I think Bill will know a little bit better by then who's actually coming and who's not. If you want to follow this, Bill is routinely updating the visitors list that you can find on the front row. And um, so you'll know. I haven't checked the weather report for this weekend, Bill. Have you done a chance to do that? Last I knew, it was pretty good. Um, you know, I think it was uh, about 60 degrees and partly sunny. So that was uh, last I checked. I have not checked today, though. The spring game always goes better with an assist from Mother Nature. We appreciate the assistance from these dudes. They'll be back on Thursday. Have a good one, Bucknutters. <laughs>